My name is Dominic Bracco, and for the last two years I've been working in Ciudad Juarez with what's known as Los Nini, which are young adults um, and teenagers between the ages of 15 and about 25 years old that don't work or study. The name comes from Ni Estudia Ni Trabaja. What's going on in Juarez right now? Well, what is is really complicated um, because you have so many factors that play into it. Uh, it's exciting uh, to look at in a way because because you're able to see such stark contrasts from what the the actual effects of government policies on that region. So when you look at, for example, what's happening to youth and what is, you can see how. Uh, a law that was passed you know, 15 years ago is directly affecting the life of a young person now in the city. And in a way, you can't see that anywhere else. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's really tragic. The city is uh, kind of like a jail almost for some of the poorest people in Mexico who have arrived from all over the country looking for jobs and searching for some kind of future, but when they arrived, they found the city without infrastructure, and they, because of its proximity to the United States and the corruption that was already there, it turned into this kind of crazy microcosm for a society of, of extreme capitalism, and in all fronts, um, the, the, the private sector, uh, you see people working for wages as low as $50 a week. Um, and if you look into the, to the criminal sector, you see the same sort of patterns where uh, there's a, an exploited population of, of poor people um, being used uh, in this drug war. And what happened was when the war started and the Sinaloa cartel decided to come in to Ciudad Juarez, they realized that they would lose a lot of people and that it would be very difficult to take over the city. So the way that they did it was by using young people in the city and having them take corner by corner. Uh, and because of the way that the city had grown, it, it expanded, basically doubled in about 20 years, the population. Uh, the young people were already falling into these neighborhood barrio gangs and they were already starting to get involved in criminal activity because of the lack of schools. You know, there in some it's about one high school for six hundred thousand inhabitants in Ciudad Juarez. There's a there's a really high cost to go to school in Juarez if you want to study. It, it costs you about a week's salary per month to pay for the school, and so it's it's almost impossible for these kids who come from Aquila worker families to make it. And the the narcos took advantage of this opportunity and would hire the kids for about 50 bucks a day to go kill other people from the other cartel. And um, and it worked in a way. I mean, at this point, it looks like they're winning the city. Uh, but the numbers of, of dead are, are huge because of this. Um, you know, the massacres in the city of, you know, 20 to 15 people at a time uh, young people between the ages of 13 years old and 20 years old, school children, it's just, you know, the, the kind of events that have happened because of this are pretty horrific. Um, but as I was doing my research and, and out photographing, uh, what was amazing is that you would, you would get to know these kids and they would be kids that were, you know, good kids with a, a really, um, that wanted to, to move forward in their lives, but but were unable because of the, the society that they were brought up into. And over the course of two years, I've watched them uh, kind of fall into these normal patterns of what happens to people in Juarez and um, been involved in, in, in murders and been involved in, in crimes, been robbed themselves, had family members killed, and, um, and then enter the maquilas and kind of start this whole pattern all over again of poverty. And uh, it's been a... Uh, a tragic thing to watch. It, you know, you get close to these people after two years of, of working with them. Um, but at the same time, some exciting things have happened. I've seen some people been able to make it uh, in, a, in, a, in a happier life. Uh, 
So when I when I started doing this project and I started working with the Pulitzer Center, one of the things I wanted to do was actually show that sort of a positive story. And with the Pulitzer Center's help, we went back and we did a story about a young boy who's 15 years old and he is uh, finds music in the clarinet and he was one of these Nini uh, who would have fallen into the traps of society. He could have become a nautical or a drug addict. You know, there's hundreds of thousands of drug addicts in the city. He already it admits it in the film that without music he had nothing and um, because of the orchestra and because of his newfound affection for music he was saved and uh, sometimes I think those kind of stories are important to tell as well when you're looking at this kind of spectrum of, of horrific things you got to show hope as well there's got to be some kind of change that's possible and it's important to show that as well and I think that this film really encompasses that. And what's it like working in the city? Are you in, in, in any danger there as a as photographer and documentarian? Uh, working in the city is dangerous. Uh, you've, especially the stuff that I do, I spend a lot of time with people that are sometimes under threat themselves, and because of that, it puts, my, it puts me at, at risk. Um, but I, I do everything I can to take precautions. I, I um, you know, I, I come in and out of the city. Uh, I never stay too long, and... I try as much as I can to, to not work too late at night. Uh, at the same time, um, there's only a certain number of things that you can really do to stay safe, uh, but I feel like the, the work that I'm doing there is important and it's worth the risk.